What's up, guys? Uh, welcome to uh, another episode of The Rundown. This is for week number three. Week three. Week three of Killjoys. Week three, yes, dealing with anger. Man, a big one, right? God. Anger issues, anger management. So, oh, I got to start. I'm mad at it. It starts the timer on time, so I got it right, now. How, so. how many minutes we got today? Uh, I guess we're going to see. See how fast we can get this. All right, let's go. Not so, that we're in a hurry. We want to provide content. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, this one is, uh, this is definitely, uh, every, every single week of this has been good. And, and I was talking with uh, Jordan. He hosted with me this week week and i was just kind of started with like why are we even talking about something that would kill your joy like what's mm-hmm. the big deal about killing our joy Any, anything, anything that just comes off the top on that well i mean it's the joy of the lord that keeps us and i mean i think y'all are talking about the difference between happiness and yep. joy and yep. i heard you say like happiness is based on happenings that's right so if i'm right. if things are happening good i'm happy and if things are not happening so good i'm not happy but yep. joy is deeper than that that's joy right. Is get you through that morning, get you through every circumstance. Mm. Uh, it's the joy of the Lord of really just knowing my name is written in the book of life, That's man. Right. Just knowing that brings yeah. joy. That's good. That's good. And I just think about the things that make us make us different, set us apart. And man, joy is that is that constant. The, the fact that we have the hope in Jesus Christ mm-hmm. there. So this week we talked about anger. And coming around, they got you talked about, it, and you, you've said this before. And I love this, just identifying, but a spewer and a stewer. Everybody falls into these two camps, right? Right. So here's the question: Which one are you? Um, I'm like in the middle. Okay. I will okay. stew and spew a little bit. Um, just a little on both ends. I, I asked my wife. I asked her. I said, "Could you make a list? What I do that makes you mad?" Mm. I said, "Make me a list." And she ran a paper. Like, I mean, she has, there's no more notebook paper. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We had to go like, go, like Staples and get new, you know, box of paper and stuff. Um, she goes, I don't know if it makes me mad. I think it just agitates me, aggravates me. Mm-hmm. And one was, one of them was whenever um, uh, she wants the kids to go to bed early, but dad wants to stay up and dad lets them stay up when she wants them to go to bed. And then, you know, and she will spew it. Like yeah. she will yeah. say, mama said it, let's go, let's go, yeah. let's go. I don't know. It takes a lot. I think, I don't know. I try to process, I, I don't process inwardly. I know you think that too, because I'm an extrovert, so I mm-hmm. speak out, but mm-hmm. it's normally not with a an aggressive tone instantly. It's mm-hmm. usually right, well, how it goes, right? You're tired. Mm-hmm. You didn't get enough sleep last night. You didn't have but this one cup. You need four cups of coffee. You know, it's, it's and everything kind of builds up, but still that's no excuse. And that's what the sure. whole point was. You don't have an excuse to, you got to get back why you even angry in the first place. Yeah. So I think yeah. I'm kind of middle and, I told the boys they're not. I said, "Y'all know it takes a lot to make Dad aggravating, like, mad, and angry." And then that night they were they were kind of fighting around. And I said, "Mom said get in bed and get in bed now." And they looked at me and said, "Yeah, Dad, it takes a lot to really get you angry, you know." And so there's those moments that you have, yeah. and it's um, I don't know. I think I'm kind of in between. I don't really stew. I don't, I don't hold stuff in. I yeah. I speak it out and yeah. share it. I think I think. Um, I think my wife would definitely say that I'm a I'm a spewer. So I definitely don't hold I don't I hold a very short list of of accounts. But but if it does build up, it'll it, you know I gotta let off some steam sometimes. So, but um, so I, I I would say she is definitely a, more of a stewer. I'm a spewer. I wanna uh, if there's something that happens, I wanna get through it. She wants to more think of it. And so through the years, we've we've definitely kind of figured that dynamic out a little bit but any any words of advice of if you've got a spewer and a stewer in a relationship how do they coexist yeah uh that's where i get into counseling my wife says she goes i don't need a counselor right now quit being a counselor to me you know how to talk about it i think one just recognizing it yeah two when you recognize that your wife wants to process and think give her the Mm -hmm. space to do that uh two also knowing that your husband might be a spewer so then how do i how do i bring this up in a way that engage a conversation yeah. versus dropping on a hammer on and going mm-hmm. boom this happened you know how do you not that you ease into it but mm-hmm. it's, it's a tact the way you communicate with each other so once you know that about each other and then really this is a big one right me and myself we just need to grow up mm-hmm. right i mean come on i mean it's so crazy because we, we take it on the people that we love mm-hmm. you know i mean i know my wife loves me i know my kids loves me but then why do they get the brunt sometimes at the end of a bad day or tiredness or things didn't go your way yeah. So, I mean, I think just recognize that one that one of you are the other way and then talking while you're not aggravated. Mm-hmm. Like, how are we going to deal with this if the issues come up? And there's sometimes like, uh-uh-uh, you said you wouldn't spew. Ah, right, you're right. Or, hey, you've held that in for a week. You said you wouldn't. Yeah. So I think talking about it when you're not hotheads, how you have a game plan. And there's going to be those moments because we're still messed up, you know. Yeah. I think for me, I know one thing that I recognize about myself, and, and you, you alluded to this in the message, is – so many times 
I get aggravated or frustrated because people maybe don't do things the way that I would have done them. Mm-hmm. And so my expectation of, through my lens of, of how I would have done something, somebody else doesn't live up to that. And so when you said basically just, hey, don't people don't, you know, um, meet those expectations that that causes and, and Colossians 3:13 says that right it says make allowances mm-hmm. so that's one thing that definitely intrigued me is <coughs> like practically what are some ways that people can can be proactive about making those allowances for I think the whole verse says uh, make allowances for each other's faults basically because mm-hmm. they're going to happen we're, we're, we're not perfect people yeah I think it depends on what translation you use and that was the New Living Translation the other ones will say bear one another's faults like you mm-hmm. you you make allowance to understand that you know hurting people hurt people mm-hmm. and so the allowance I think the equity yes you can have the relationship equity I mean you have it with your wife you have it with your spouse right, right? you build the relationship relationship and then there's a withdrawal how okay yeah you should but you, you, sure. you work through it um, but I think the allowance that you can build in you is to count your blessings and name them one by one. When you make, when you realize how much God has forgiven you, build that allowance up yeah. so that when someone takes a withdrawal from you, you're like, you know what? I've been forgiven of all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I need to forgive you. Mm-hmm. And forgiveness is not for them. That's right. Forgiveness is for you. So yeah. you to get healed, for you to work through the stuff. So the, the allowance you put up is remember how what God has done to you. And that's one way, even about my, my kids, I've tried to, before I walk in and get hothead, um, to realize how many times have I blown it and how does God treat me? Mm-hmm. So I sat down and how did God treat me? And let's talk this out with them. Like, you know, how would I treat my kid? But we're still humans and we make mistakes and yeah. we learn from them and we grow. And um, so I think the allowance that you could build up is the understanding of look what debt I have been forgiven. How can I hold a debt over someone's head? Because that's what it is. It's a debt yeah. to debt or relationship. Yeah. You took something from me, you owe me. Yeah. And now you need to pay it back. Mm. And so I'm mad until you do. And it can be 30 years from now. And they can't, right? They, and that's the thing, they, they can't. can't. Yeah. A dad can't go back to his 25-year-old son and make up not being there since he was 12. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. Yeah. Can't pay that back. Yeah. And so how do you what do you, how do you move forward now? Yeah. How do you pay that debt? How do you release that yeah. and say, I'll release you from the debt? Yeah. And, so, and, and so that really, the, the, your, your final question was, what's one thing we can do to get rid of the anger that's in our life? So, so to that 25-year-old son who, who has that, I know, you know, you, you've dealt with some of these situations mm-hmm. in your life. Like, how do you practically do that? How do you get it out without just, like, spewing the anger out? How do you get it out? Well, if in the context of Ephesians chapter 4, it says we're not like Gentiles anymore in the way they think. Mm-hmm. You now have been given a mind of Christ. You have a new attitude in your mind. And so when I realized, let's say the 25-year-old realized the dad can't go back and mm-hmm. back pay for the, what, 12 years he wasn't there or so, mm-hmm is to realize that um, I have been forgiven. He can't repay a debt. Why hold a debt? God didn't hold a debt over my head. And so for me, as God's forgiven me, I must forgive them. Now, it may take time to build back trust. It may take time to build a relationship. You may not even want a relationship. Yeah. It's the point of is like I have to, for my sake, not to be a bitter, angry person for the rest of my life, is to forgive and when you do that, you'll start seeing the joy come back into your life mm-hmm. and realize that hurting people hurt people. And you can't go back to the 12 years ago for that to be fixed. And you know what? Most likely that he was in a hurting position. Mm. Something was going on in his life. And you know what? He can't pay it, but I'm going to cancel the debt. Yeah. Um, we live in a society people want to hold on to the debt because it makes them feel justice. It justifies. It's, it's when I get angry, I have a right to be angry. Mm. You hurt me, you wrong me, so I'm gonna hang on to it because it's the only thing I have to make me feel better about me. Yeah. Which makes it all about me. me. Mm. And so that's why it says bear one another's burdens, like carry that to be able to release it to help other people and forgive other people. So forgiveness is a tough one. It's a sticky one because yeah. we get hurt and we get hurt easily. And but ultimately, um, it's a choice, right? It's it is a choice. choice. Yeah, but as a believer, as a believer, you do have a choice. But really, I would say you have no choice Mm. because God has canceled your debt. So always remember, you have been forgiven. And one thing you can do this week to start working back through anger is to ask yourself that question. Just stop that question: Why am I so angry? Mm. Like, where anger is really is it's a passionate love to protect something, and a lot of times that passion is misguided. Yeah, because God had a righteous anger. There's a passionate love that He loves for us. Um, but for us, we'll misguide that mm. that love and say, I love myself and my time more than that, so I'm mad when you inconvenience mm. me. It's mm. self-inconvenience or it's self-centered. You messed up my schedule, and I'm mad at you 
because it inconvenienced me. Right. Because I love my schedule and my time more than being with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bad place. That's a tough place, man. And there's and this right. So anger can it comes from so many different places, right? It can come from something that's very insignificant, like my time, my schedule, but it also can come from significant scars and hurts in our life. Mm-hmm. But but regardless of where that where that is, yes, you may have more of a right over here than here, but still for our own good, for our own development, hanging on to that is detrimental, will continue to be detrimental in our not only in our relationship with, with the Lord, but just our relationship with other people and our own health, right? It's it's a, it, and here's the thing. And oh, we're ten minutes and we're getting flagged down here because we said we we're gonna be short. And, and but here's the here's, here's here's the thing. The one that been hurt in the main scar, everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. I know why you're hurt. Mm-hmm. He left you. She hurt you. He walked out on mm-hmm. you. Dad wasn't there. Mom wasn't there. Fill in the blank. Yeah. That hurts. It's the little ones that build up every day of inconvenience of me. Mm-hmm. Like I said, when the six-year-old spills his soup, mm-hmm. you've cleaned the whole house, and now you're irate and mad over a yeah. kid because he knocked it over because... Now I have to clean it and inconvenience me in my schedule to do that. It's those little that builds up mm-hmm. that people listen that we think, well, that's not a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. How do I deal with the little ones too? The big ones we know. Mm-hmm. But if I can get better every little day, little by little, mm-hmm. then hopefully the spewing and stewing kind of just becomes calm. Yeah. Be kind, be compassionate, and then mm-hmm. forgive one another. And that's the antidote, right? That's the Kindness, that's that's compassionate. The, right there is the there uh, antidote and this the what's it looking for? The Strategy, I don't know whether I don't know what it is. Something like that. But it's the I have it in my notes. I remember seeing it there. I just can't it's remember. Secure. Secure. There you go. There you go. All right. It's a good go. place to end it right there. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, for just uh taking a few more moments just to kind of expound upon that and, and give us some practical wisdom. The whole point of this, guys, is to make Sunday or whenever you engage with the sermon, it, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But it, if it just starts and ends in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, it will not take root. And, and, and Anger's not going to end on Sunday. That's right. You better work on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, right. and we're trying to add some you supplement throughout right. through it. So. Well, guys, we'll see you right back here next week. Thanks for joining us.